Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, welcome to everyone who made it out. Pastor, along with our uh, quizzing group, is en route to Virginia. So we pray for the quizzers that they can glean some things from this and that it can touch their lives. It's not just about memorizing verses, but it's about getting a relationship with the author of the verses. That's what it's all about. We learn the verses, it sticks in our heart, and then we apply what we have in our hearts and minds. Amen. But we'll keep them in prayer as they travel, and they should be back late Saturday. So... But anyways, uh, they've been doing good. Uh, Stowe is getting to be known throughout the district, and they're on the map for quizzing, which is good, and that's a noble thing. So anyways, uh, we'll keep that in prayer. Uh, let me just give you the list of events here and our calendar so you know what's happening. Um, tomorrow night is Ladies' Bible Study at 7 o'clock. Um, okay, and the 12th, which is Monday, we have men's Bible study at 7 o'clock, and it's a fellowship time, too. You know, you, you talk, you have a good time, you share things, and then there's a Bible study, too. There's some prayer, so it's a good thing to come out to for the men and women that's maybe not connected to a service, but still, it's a little bit more informal. Okay, then um, there's the... Uh, senior and Junior Bible Quizzing Tournament on Saturday the 17th. And the pastor on the 18th is going to uh, start a discipleship class Sunday evenings at 6. And he'll give you more details as we get closer. Then there's a youth event, uh, 4 p.m. on the 24th. And on the 20th, that's a Saturday, on Sunday the 25th, there's going to be a PM youth-led service, which is good. The last one, there was an anointing. There were blessings. There were, it was really good because our young people are seeking God. That's the next generation. When we pass, uh, some of you are younger, but uh, when the more uh, senior people pass, there has to be a generation that know God. Amen. So these things, and it's posted uh, usually in the back, and you can get these calendars monthly. Uh, thanks to my wife, she puts these together, and uh, then they get uh, put on our, I believe, on our uh, website they're put on. So for prayers, yes, we do need prayers. We need to pray for our quizzers. They will probably arrive sometime later tonight. So that's a long ride, not as long as Florida, but still it's a long ride. And um, also there are certain needs. We have to keep uh, Sister Wanda Ludwig in prayer. Um, that's a need. Also, uh, Sister Charlotte Schaefer, her brother passed, Jay. So we want to keep that whole family in prayer for comfort and peace. Because when you, and I've, <coughs> I've lost some close people in my life, and it hurts. And there's only one thing that can really comfort, and that's the Holy Spirit. We need to pray for the Holy Spirit to comfort, and also the sympathy of other people. They need that. They need that strength from other people and encouragement. We're going to get through this together. So we'll pray for that. Do I have any other prayer requests we can bring before the Lord tonight? I'm going to start on the left side. Yeah, Brother David. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Anyone else on the left side? Yeah. Got to keep uh, Sister Carolyn uh, Blankenship in prayer. And our families, yes. Um, any others? How about on this side? Any other prayer requests? Okay. Good. 
run. Amen. 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 Yep. That's that's gotta be good. Any other prayer requests? We should bring these, yes, Sister Bly. Function. Okay, what's her last name again? Ricks. Ricks. Okay. All right. I think I'm at my limit of memory. <laughs> this happens with time. But anyways, we're going to put these prayer requests before the Lord. And what we remember is every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. And it comes down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variableness nor shadow of turning. So he is an Indian giver. He loves to give gifts. Healing and deliverance and salvation are part of that plan. So let's bring this to the Lord. Lord Jesus, we love you, God. We thank you, God. You hear prayer, Lord God, and you touch needs, Lord God. We ask you, Lord God, as we set before you these requests, these petitions, God, that you show and reveal your miraculous power. And Lord God, the healing and deliverance associated with it, the salvation, God. We ask you to go out and touch these needs as they have set before you, Lord God, to bless and protect our quizzers and the coaches and families that are traveling. Protect them. Keep your angels around them all the way down to Virginia while they're there and all the way back in Jesus' name. And prosper the quizzers and bring into their mind and heart the scriptures that they have memorized and committed in Jesus' name. We ask you also to touch uh, Sister Charlotte Schaefer, Lord God, and also her brother Jay's family. Send comfort, send blessing, send peace, Lord God. Send strength, Lord God, as only you can in Jesus' name. 
Touch Brother David's personal request, Lord God. You can see that. You can see what's in his heart. And Lord God, also touch our families, Lord God. The ones we have burden for, we want to see them saved, Lord God. Speak to their hearts. Give them ears to hear. And Lord God, spiritual eyes to see spiritual things and hear your voice in Jesus' name. Also, Lord God, we ask you to touch Sister Carolyn Blankenship, Lord God. We want to see a healing there. We want to see deliverance there, Lord God. And we want to see her get strong and come back to church, strengthen her back, her leg, God, that she can spring up and praise you in Jesus' name. We ask you to touch Sister uh, Wanda Ludwig, Lord God. We like, like to hear a good report come out of that in Jesus' name. We ask you to touch, Lord God, that girl that's having the problem, Lord God, and she has just received the Holy Ghost. We're leaving that in your care, Lord God, to see that she and the family, Lord God, gets established in the truth and deliverance, God, which is by your spirit and your power in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord God. We ask you to touch Mary Ricks, God. She's got a problem with her shoulder, Lord God. We ask you, Lord God, to deliver her, strengthen the muscle there, that it be right, Lord God, and that she function normal again in Jesus' name. Thank you, Almighty God. And Lord God, any other request, Lord God, in someone's heart or any other petition which was not set before us, we ask you to touch that need, Lord God. And have your will and way upon this Bible study tonight and those that are gathered here, God. Flow and minister and touch in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God is good all the time. Amen. Amen. There's no time that God is not good. Amen. So I'm going to be ministering tonight. Uh, the privilege that pastor, he asked me if I would minister, and I, I give honor to our pastor um, that he uh, is, he's got the wisdom, he's got a flock, he's got responsibility, and he entrusted me to minister tonight to the flock which I'm thankful for. I like to be used by God. Amen. So tonight I'm talking about the flow of the Spirit. Amen. But I'm going to come down to some physical principles first and talk about that. The flow of the Spirit and the anointing. These are things I'm going to look at. Now, in order to have a flow, there has to be a source there has to be an outlet. It goes from one place to another place. And I got Webster's definition of a flow or flow. It's to stream or well forth. To stream or well forth. That's Webster. Also, to issue or proceed from a source to issue or proceed from a source. And I got Brother Moore's definition. <laughs> I always got a definition because I look at things and I like to give my own, uh, uh, what do you call it, input. A directed movement. A directed movement. That's a flow. Now, when it comes to flows, I used to hike out in the woods quite a bit in New England. And there, there were many streams. There were lakes, there were marshes, there were swamps, there were ponds, uh, and there were rivers, and there were brooks and brooklets and all this sort of stuff, wherever water could be found. But the flow would always come uh, in the form of a stream or a river or a, a cascading waterfall or something like that. But it involved movement. Now, with the flow of any type of stream, there has to be a source. It just doesn't keep flowing from nowhere. There has to be a source. And there has to be a way it's going and a destination. With every flow, there's got to be. Now, 
I used to hike, as I said, and I used to hike mountains, and I learned through experience, you always pack water. Because the time you hike and go any distance without water, what's going to happen is you're going to dehydrate. You need water. So I learned to bring a canteen, and there was this place I used to hike up in New Hampshire. And I'd climb a mountain, which was sizable. It was a day's hike up and a day's hike down. And they had near the base, they had a spring. And in this spring, was called, it was called Falcon Springs, I can remember. And there would always be on a certain trail, and there would be a group of people just lounging about, sitting on logs, sitting on rocks. And out of the ledge there, which was on the side of the mountain, there would come out, there was this pipe, and there would be water flowing at all times. And people would be drinking, filling up their canteens. What a refresher after you've climbed up and down the mountain. I used to fill my canteen. By the time I was back down, it was warm. But it was constantly flowing. And it's just like, one thing you got to know about these streams, I used to hike, you have to know where the source is before you get down and drink. Because I used to drink from some streams. You do not want to drink from a stream that comes from a beaver pond. That just isn't kosher. You don't do that unless you have an affinity to beaver. But it could be kind of an kind of upsetting uh, experience if you're not used to that. But anyways, you want to know its source. The source I would like to drink from is a mountain. Because water just has a way of leaching down into the rocks. Usually it's safe. And it's cold, and it's crisp, and it's refreshing. On a hot day, when it's 90 degrees, you just want to drink water that has flowed. Now, you don't want to go to something that looks like a puddle with mosquitoes and pollywogs. You do not want to drink out of that because it has no flow, no vent. You want it fresh and living. Now, when you look at, I've got to give you another example. When you look at plants and trees, and I did take botany in different courses, but when you look at plants and trees, the sap is what flows from the roots comes up through the trunk, out to the branches, into the twigs, into the leaves, and then into the blossoms and then the fruit. There has to be a flow for life. If there's no flow, eventually the tree will come down. Or there's a strong wind, but we won't get into that. But anyways, there has to be a flow for life. Now, in the fall, we know that the leaves drop off, and apparently the tree looks dead. But what happens is the flow is interrupted. And the, the uh, little machines in the leaves which create chlorophyll, okay, they need that flow. So what happens in the fall when the sun gets to a certain elevation and God put it, this property into nature, each leaf node where the leaf comes out of the node on the tip of the twig, there is what is called a... Uh, abscission zone that forms. The abscission zone forms and stops the flow. And the leaf then no longer produces chlorophyll and it's the green part disappears. And oftentimes you got uh, different types of uh, color that are in the leaves and it turns yellow, red, orange, and then brown, then it drops off. But there has to be a flow in order that there be growth. Now, um, that's with that. God's spirit flows. And you know something else? His word flows. Did you know his word flows? You can read the word of God, and it can flow out and touch you. It's like, wow, I got understanding. Where did that come from? The word flowed out. It flowed out and the spirit also flowed, giving you understanding what that word is. But it flows out. Well, let's look at some scripture. 
the first scripture I want to look at, because we need to back this up with scripture, is in Ecclesiastes. Amen. Oh, yeah, there we go. Chapter 1 and verse 7. And when you read that, it says, well, let me move that a little. All the rivers run into the sea, yet the sea is not full. You ever wonder why that is? I mean, they keep running into the sea. You figure we'd have a pretty big sea after a while. But it does, it never gets full. This is the wisdom of Solomon. Unto the place whence the rivers come, tither they return again. So it keeps flowing. The rivers keep flowing into the sea to see the level, unless we got a high tide, low tide, or a tsunami, get out of the way. But unless something like that, the sea never gets over full, and it keeps flowing in. And wherever, unless we have a drought, wherever these rivers are flowing from, something's feeding them. And there's a source to that. And somehow the water gets back to where the rivers start. And it flows down again and into the ocean again. This, this is really amazing the way God put this principle in nature. But he put that principle there. Everything makes a circuit, and you're going to see it here. So the water comes down these little streams into the rivers, out to the sea, and what happens? It evaporates, and it goes up into the clouds. Then the clouds blow over. There's condensation. It drops as rain over the landscape or over the sea, and it forms little brooklets that form streams, that form rivers that come back into the big body of water. And it's just a cycle. You know, these cycles are everywhere. God put them in nature. But there's a constant flow. The wind goes this way, comes back that way. Goes this way, comes back that way. Man comes forth from the dust, and guess what? He returns to the dust. But anyways, everything makes a circuit. And this, <laughs> I use this example. But you know, everything makes a circuit, even at home. You get up in the morning, you have to have a little something to eat, a little something to drink, and then you go to bed at night, have maybe a little something to eat and drink, maybe meals between, you get up the next day and you're hungry again. You know, you get, especially for young parents, you get all this dirty laundry on the floor, you pick it up, you throw it in the basket, you throw it in the hamper, okay, and then it goes into the washer, it goes into the dryer, it gets folded neatly, and it goes back into the bureau drawer, and it's back on the floor again. It's amazing. Everything makes a circuit. Well, there's a spiritual principle with this, too. Everything does make a circuit. Amen. But anyways, let's look at some more scripture here. We're going to look in uh, John chapter 7. And in John chapter 7, we're going to go to verse 38 and 39. And in verse 38, Jesus speaking, it should be in your, if you've got a red letter edition, he that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Out of his innermost being is going to flow rivers of living water. So he said, if you believe on me, then this is going to happen. This is exciting. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive, for the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. But it was something that was going to come in their future. He said, if you believe on him, then this was going to flow out of your innermost being. Flow. Not just sit resident and stagnant, but flow. And in fact, and this isn't even one of my scriptures, but he speaks of himself as a well of water. By receiving the Holy Ghost, a well of water springing up into everlasting life. 
everlasting life. So also I want to look at um, here in uh, the book of Ezekiel, chapter 47. In Ezekiel 47, we're going to look at um, verse 8, 9, and verse 12. Just to establish a little bit of background, what we're talking about here is there is this stream of living water that's coming out underneath the house of God. From the right side or south side of the altar, the right side of the house, it issues toward the east country. Now, this is Jerusalem. So it issues toward the east country. And if you know anything about the geography, you're going to know that to the east of Jerusalem, you have the, first of all, the Jordan River, but it feeds into a place called the Dead Sea. Okay? The Dead Sea is just that. It's very dead. There's no life in it. There's no fish in it. But this is going to be different. This is speaking of the millennial earth. It's going to be different at this point. So we pick up here in uh, Ezekiel 47, verse number uh, 8. It says, Then said he unto me, These waters issue. Now the word issue means also flow. Remember, we got it in Webster to flow, issue out toward the east country and go down into the desert. What a place to get water. I mean, when you're really dry, you're really parched, the ground is parched and dry, there's nothing as welcoming as water. Crisp, cold, refreshing water. So it goes down to the desert and go into the sea. The only sea there is the Dead Sea which being brought forth into the sea, the water shall be healed. So in the future, the Dead Sea will no longer be the Dead Sea. It will be the living sea because the waters will be healed. It's very mineralized there. My wife got some salt from the granddaughters who went there, salt and minerals, and it's really, it is really mineralized. I was told that if a person were to lay there, they would float without even trying. That's how much minerals is in the water, and fish just can't cut it. So anyways, and it shall come to pass, verse 9, that everything that liveth which moveth, see, living things move. Even trees move in the wind. Whithersoever the river shall come shall live. And there shall be a very great multitude of fish, because these waters come thither. For they shall be healed, and everything shall live whither the river cometh. So wherever the river goes through, things are going to live. It doesn't say it's going to gather there. It's going to flow through. Living things. So looking here in verse number 12, And by the river upon the bank thereof, on this side and on that side, so in other words, both sides, there's only two sides to the river, okay, shall grow all trees for meat, whose leaf shall not fade, neither shall fruit thereof be consumed. It shall bring forth new fruit according to his months, Because their waters, they issued out of the sanctuary. There's your source, the sanctuary. What about the sanctuary? The presence of God. That is the sanctuary. A sanctuary should be a presence of God. That's what sanctuaries are for. That's why they call it sanctuary. It's separated for God's purpose. Amen. It's it's a very, very hallowed place. And the fruit thereof shall be for meat, and the leaf thereof for medicine. This is awesome. We pick up on this again in Revelation 22, 1. We're going to see another river. But this is coming from the throne of God, his presence in heaven. And it flows out from the throne. And wherever it flows, there's life. And there's going to be 12 manner of trees, 12 manner of fruit, And they will be for the healing of the nations. 
This is awesome. Amen. But it's living water. Out of your belly shall flow living water. Not dead water, not stagnant water, not polluted water. Holy, pure, flowing water from the source. Amen. In Acts 1.8, and I'm going to go there. In Acts 1.8, and, uh, you know, Jesus talking to his disciples, and this is uh, before he ascended. This is, this is good. He says in Acts 1.8, and we can all probably quote this, but ye shall receive power. Dunamis. After that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Do you know there's flow here and there's anointing? There's a flow. Where is it? He says when you receive the Holy Ghost, you're going to receive power after it comes upon you. Power to be witnesses to me here. So the Holy Ghost was received in Jerusalem in an upper room. After tarrying and praying for about seven, eight days, the Holy Spirit came. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all gathered in one place and in one accord. They were sitting, they were praying at the time it came in. And it came in as a rush of a mighty wind. And it filled the whole place where they were sitting. It was a flow. It filled the whole place where they were sitting. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave utterance. This is awesome. But it was prophesied. You wait and it's going to come upon you. Just tarry, tarry, tarry. Pray, pray and be ready. But I want you to notice something. It started in an upper room. From there, the day of Pentecost was fully come, and I taught the men on uh, the Hebrew calendar and the importance of the Hebrew calendar. We're on a, uh, really on a, a solar calendar, which is Romanized. We're on a Julian calendar. They were on a lunar calendar, so it's quite different. Well, it, all in all, it ends up evening out in the end. But after seven weeks of harvest, grain harvest, from the Passover to Pentecost, it was seven Sabbaths. At the end of the seventh Sabbath, which is a Saturday, sundown Friday to sundown Saturday was the Sabbath. At the end of the seventh Sabbath, at sundown, the day of Pentecost was fully come. And they were all in one place and in one accord. And the Holy Ghost came in, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And all night long, they were full of the Holy Ghost to the place where they were drunk on the Spirit. This is why Peter said on the day of Pentecost, uh, about the third hour of the day, which was 9 a.m., these are not drunk as you suppose, but this is that which was spoken of by the prophet Joel, that in the latter days I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. And also upon my handmaidens and servants would I pour out of my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. So they were filled, and it was a flow. And what happened is it spilled out into the streets of Jerusalem the next day. And from Jerusalem, it went to Judea. And from Judea, it went to Samaria. And from Samaria, it went to the uttermost part of the earth. So it emanated from an impact point where the Spirit came down. And just like something impacting water, all the ripples came out from that point, And it flowed out to the world from that point. Amen. 120 people in the upper room. Amen. So there's, it emanates or flows or issues. Now, the flow of the Spirit is necessary in our lives for all these reasons, and I've got a bunch of reasons. We must be connected to the source of the flow first. 
We have to be connected. That's a relationship with God, relationship with Jesus Christ. That is being connected to the flow. So we must be connected to the source in a relationship with God. And with, with the Jews, a lot of them didn't receive him because they were very religious, but there was no relationship there. They didn't even know who he was. They crucified the Lord of glory. Had they known it, they would have not crucified the Lord of glory, but he hid his identity from them because it wasn't given for them to know because their hearts weren't right. Amen, but that's another thing. So the flow is necessary in these. I got nine points. You may find more. The flow is necessary, spiritual flow, in growth, spiritual growth, and in spiritual living. It's necessary. All life on earth needs water. Okay, I can't think of too many things that don't need water in some way that they feed. Even a virus feeds on a human or an animal that has water. We're like, I believe it's like 85% water. But anyways, we need water to live. We need Holy Ghost water to live spiritually. As the natural, so the spiritual. Amen. Amen. So with this, we need the Holy Spirit in spiritual growth. And spiritual growth means to be ahead of we were before. To grow closer to God, to grow in love and knowledge of him, relationship with him in the Holy Ghost, in the word, in the truth, in the gospel, in his name. We grow in him. Without the flow, there's no growth. But the flow flows, it makes a circuit. It flows into us, but we don't put a cap on it. It flows out. Can you imagine, especially if you live a distance from here, filling your gas tank all the way up, okay? Driving around the block and coming back and trying to fill your gas tank again. It just isn't going to do it. You're going to end up with more gas down on the, you know, the surface of the, the service station than you got in your tank. The idea is once you fill your tank, you go on a trip. Amen. And there's some nice places to go, but I can't go into that. But anyways, you go on a trip, so you use the gas that's given you. Amen. So God gives us spiritual gas. Amen. Amen. The Holy Spirit, it comes into us but then we should use it, amen. amen, to be a blessing to someone else and let it flow out and take it in again. And this in and flowing out is relationship with God. How much source, how much does our source have? Our source, God, has a limitless supply. He can't run out. He can't run dry. It's infinite. He is an infinite being. We are not. We are temporal, but we need that spirit. Amen. Now, number two, we need uh, the flow. It's necessary for staying spiritually alert and hearing God's voice. We need to be spiritually alert so we know what's going on around us. There is a lot going on around us spiritually, but it's spiritually perceived. We need the Spirit of Christ in us so we can perceive the things going on around us because there's so much going on. I'm just amazed at the things because you can see even in this natural world the evidence of things that's happening in the spiritual realm because they reflect into the natural realm. Amen. We want to hear God's voice. God speaks all the time. His creation speaks all the time. The heavens declare the glory of God. The firmament showeth his handiwork. Day unto day utter a speech. Night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. And God speaks out of his word. He speaks in gentle impressions. He can speak verbally, but he speaks. Amen. Isn't it amazing? God spoke and things happened. God spoke, and things were created. 
It's powerful. Amen. We need to hear his voice. Number three, we need the flow for spiritual discernment. If we're spiritually alert, we have to know what's of God and what's not of God. Because there are things that are obvious to me, may not be obvious to you. There's things that are obvious to you, may not be obvious to me, that are not of God or they are of God. And it takes discernment to know what's of God and what's not of God. Amen. When I get to the point on anointing, I don't think I'm going to get there. It'll have to be another time. But it's to know the difference between right and wrong. Now, the word sets it in order. It sets it very uh, concretely what's right and what's wrong. But there's things out there which we can perceive that we can know if we're in the flow of the Spirit, this is not right with God or this is good with God. And it helps us to have this discernment. Number four, the flow is necessary in maintaining joy, peace, and righteousness. These are products of the Holy Spirit and the flow. Joy, peace, and righteousness. In this crazy world, I'm not speaking of the people, but the system. In this crazy world, we need to be settled in God's peace. Joy, we need to have his joy. Joy isn't just being happy over events or things. Joy is something that is in us that helps us to be settled in God, and we feel this exuberance because we know that God is for us. And if God is for us, who can be against us? And we know the end of the book. That should give us plenty of joy. Amen. Praise God. And righteousness. We want to, and I find myself making mistakes all the time because there is this flesh issue and I, I, I got to strive towards God's righteousness. You know, strive to be holy in all I can, in conversation, in deed, action, you know, in thought. We, these are products of maintaining the flow. And if we're in the flow, God will convict us, you know, this isn't the right thing to do. He won't condemn us. There is therefore now no condemnation if we walk in the spirit and we don't walk according to the flesh. Amen. But he'll let us know. Joy, peace, and righteousness. Number five. The flow is necessary for the power to overcome the world, the flesh, sin, and temptation. And you know, this flesh, it, it doesn't like the idea of being subject to the spirit. It just does not. And it likes to do its own things. That's why when it comes to fast time, especially with me, it's very hard. It's hard to say, no, I'm not going to have that steak dinner you're cooking because I'm fasting. And you'll feel a little bit guilty for even saying it. But anyways, you have to overcome the world too. The world is going one way. The spirit's going the other way. When I say world, not just people, but the system of the world. It's going one way. There's an agenda out there which we may not even be aware of. Satan's got an agenda. It's going one way. God's got a kingdom. It's going another way. The world is going down. The church is going up. It's a big difference. Amen. So we want to overcome, you know, this power to overcome the world, the flesh, sin, and temptation. It's not an accident that our enemy goes to and fro in the earth because he's not looking to see whom he can bless. He's definitely not doing that. In fact, you see it in Job 1 and 2. And Satan is accountable to God for everything he does. So he comes before the Lord and presents himself with the sons of God. That's another study. But anyways, he presents himself before the Lord. Accountability. Where have you been? Oh, going to and fro, up and down the earth. What is he doing? Seeking whom he may devour. That's what he's doing. He is as a roaring lion. Okay? Rawr! As a roaring lion. Kids like that. But anyways, he's not the lion of the tribe of Judah. There's a fake 
and there's the real deal. We got the real deal. And when Satan looks at us and we're resolute and we have the Holy Spirit and the flow of the Spirit, he's not looking at us. He's looking at who's in us. So he's looking at whoever's standing behind you. (laughs) Amen. And Goliath found out it wasn't just that little shepherd boy. Amen. So, power to overcome. Also, power to witness. That's what the flow is necessary for. Power to witness and draw others to God. You know, this has a little bit to do with anointing. Being a little bit, and I don't use this all the time, charismatic. I'm going to get into that a little bit if we get to the anointing, which I don't think. But anyways, it is to draw people. If you're selling a used car, okay, and I don't sell used cars, but if you're selling a used car, you'll make that used car look like it's pristine, it's beautiful, it's a gem. You should buy it. But you don't want to tell the truth about it. They just drove it in there, and they were lucky to make it into your lot. Poop, 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 bang, 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 boom. (laughs) But anyways, it's just uh, something... If a, if a vacuum cleaner salesman or a used car salesman can make their product seem good and appealing, how much more can God and his word and the plan of the gospel be really attractive to someone and we should be elated to be used to share that with someone? Amen. So that they can be blessed like we're blessed. Or a little, what the world calls a little on the fruity side. But this is good fruit. Amen. Power to witness and draw others to God. And it should emanate from you. This is good. You don't want to turn people off to God. Don't want to do it by our actions. Okay, number seven. And this is what Pastor has been alluding to. The flow of the Spirit is necessary in the operation of the gifts of the Spirit. First of all, we have to have the Holy Spirit. When Jesus Christ uh, was baptized of John, and John saw the Spirit descend on him as a dove, and he was filled with the Holy Ghost, do you know, after that, he was driven into the wilderness. He was driven into the wilderness where he fasted 40 days and 40 nights. He was full of the Holy Spirit, okay? What's the difference when he came out? He came out in the power of the Holy Ghost. And ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem and Judea and all Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. Amen. It's the power that follows the flow. Amen. It's like this. It's like a gun. Okay? You can have a charge in the gun, and you can have a projectile in the gun. But until the trigger is pulled, the gun is just a pretty collectible. Well, with the Holy Spirit, you know, we can have it, but unless there's a charge behind this, witnessing and sharing with others is going to be travail. But it's it's that charge that changes people's hearts and draws them to God. Amen. Amen. Operation of the gifts of the Spirit. Power to do things that are supernatural. What we can't figure. Just and, And a lot of this depends upon our faith, too. We need to have faith in God. Take him at his word. If his word says it, it's so. Take him at his word. Amen. And the operation, and the pastor will get into the operation of the gifts of the Spirit. Right now, he, I believe he's defining them. Amen. And there's nine gifts. There's three gifts of knowledge. There's three gifts to speak. And there's three gifts of action. I believe the gifts of knowledge is word of wisdom, uh, word of knowledge, and discerning of spirits. The gifts to speak are um, 
let's see, that would be the gift of prophecy, the gift of uh, tongues, and there's one other, interpretation of tongues. Thank you, Brother David. And then the three gifts of action is working of miracles, gifts of, the, of uh, healing, and gift of faith. Amen. Now, the gift of faith is not like the faith, the measure of faith we all receive, but it's an extra boost of faith to do a work which is supernatural that God can do through us. Now, number eight, the flow of the Spirit is necessary to manifest Christ in our lives, to manifest his love and his power. And as I heard many, many ministers say, God is love. God is love personified. Jesus Christ is the expression of God's love for us. How can an eternal being love a creation? How can a potter love a pot and show the pot that he loves the pot unless he becomes a pot and show his love towards the pot as a fellow pot and then be broken for the other pot? He had to be broken, and that was the certification his love is good. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth on him or in him should not perish but have everlasting life. But we want to manifest his love and power. If God is love, love should be shed abroad by our hearts or in our hearts by the Holy Spirit that dwells and flows out of us. That love flowing out of us is by the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And number nine. The flow is necessary to minister effectively. Now, there's all kinds of ministers out there in denominalism and other things that are ministering, but they may not be ministering under the anointing. There's many preachers, but how many are sent? You know, Romans 10. So, but to minister effectively, that isn't just for ministers. That's for us. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. You read Mark 16. This is for believers. Amen. To minister. Somewhere, we, we all got to function in the body of Christ. We have those that lead our prayer chain. Very important. We have those that do our Sunday school teaching, very important. We have those that are even janitorial, very important. This is the sanctuary in the house of God. We have one doing the sound system, very important. We have those that greet people, very important. We have those for hospitality, very important. We have those that teach and preach, very important. These things are all important in the body of Christ. But we should do it with the flow of the Spirit. Amen. And I'm not going to get to the anointing. <laughs> but anyways, that'll be another time. So the flow of the Spirit is necessary for life, necessary for growth, and necessary for me. I want to be in tune with God. I want to hear Him. I want to be sensitive to Him. And I want to do things according to his will and touch someone else's life. That's what I'm here for. You know, I'm here to be a blessing to someone else. It's not just about me. And when we all get to heaven, we'll know it's not just about me. It's all about him. Amen. Praise the Lord. And I finished just in time. Amen. You can stand. the flow of the Spirit. Amen. Jesus, you're awesome, Lord God. Lord God, we love you and we praise you and we worship you, God. We thank you, God, for your blessings, God. We thank you that you're here. We thank you that you care for us, you keep us, you watch us, God. You have saved us, God. 
We want to be in the flow of your spirit. We want to be sensitive to you, God. We want to be used by you, Lord God. And Lord God, we want to see others blessed. I ask you to touch all that are gathered and all that are watching online and bless them, God, and keep them, God. And also speak to us as, Lord God, your body, the body of Christ. Lord God, bless all those that are here and protect them as they journey back home. In Jesus' name. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.